Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today I am awakening the Portulacaria Afroforest. It's been chilling down in the basement at a temperature between 5 degrees Celsius and 8 degrees Celsius. And now it's time to wake it up. I repotted this forest in July of 2019 and the repotting went well and all the trees recovered. But then that winter, a lot of the trees started getting really sick looking and started losing their leaves. I sprayed them for insects. I was really careful with the watering. I misted them, but it looks like I lost quite a few of the trees. They just never recovered that next summer. On the left hand side, I lost two trees, one near the front and one near the back. I lost some trees at the back. I'll spin the forest around and we can look at those. Right here and here. There's a look at the trees I lost at the back. Over on the right hand side, I lost a tree here also. There's a look at that tree that died on me. Yeah, the trunks. It's hollow. It's all like paper now. I left all the dead trees in the forest all last summer in hopes they might recover, but they didn't. They slowly shriveled up and died. So today I'll be pruning down the forest and I'll be using those cuttings to replace the dead trees. All the trees in this forest were in the basement where it's really cool and they've basically been dormant for about two months. I haven't been watering them a whole lot because you know they're not growing or anything and you can see some of the leaves are now getting a little shriveled. So today I'm giving them a, a good watering, bringing them up into the warmth where they'll wake up and start growing. Even all the trees in my plant room here don't grow much in December. It's very dark out. It's the shortest days of the year. They don't get much light. So in January, the days start getting longer and we seem to get more sunshine. And all the trees in the plant room naturally start waking up and growing like it's spring again. I'm hoping today that the forest has the same reaction. It's been in the cool basement. I bring it up into the warmth here. It'll just suddenly grow like crazy. So. It's a good time to prune it right now before it wakes up and then it'll burst out with all kinds of new shoots. I brought this Natal ficus up from the basement about a week and a half ago and almost all the leaves had fallen off on it and it wasn't looking so good and I thought, oh, is it going to recover? So I, I brought it up into the warmth and as soon as I did that, all the buds at the tips of the branches started swelling and now it's coming out with new growth. There's a look at one of the growing tips and you can see all the leaves were yellow like that or falling off. This one's probably ready to come off. No, not quite. And all the buds at the tips were dormant. And now you can see there's one, two, three, three new leaves coming out. It looks really healthy. I'm not going to remove the dead trees from the forest yet. I want to prune up the canopy of all the other trees, pick out my best cuttings, and then I'll replace the dead trees with the cuttings. That way I know where they were, their location in the forest. All right, I'm going to begin the pruning. And the first step is just to take the new shoots back. You can see this one's really long. So I'll take it back to a set of leaves that are facing the direction I want the new branches to grow in. So I think here I want some horizontal leaves. So I'll put it off there. I'll continue pruning these long shoots getting the trees more compact and back to size. And then after this pruning is done, we'll go in and look at the structure of the plant and see if it needs further refinement. The trees in this forest were all developed using clip and grow, and they're quite old now. They're probably over 20 years old. If you're unsure how far to take them back, be uh, conservative. Take them back just a little and you can take them back even more once you stand back and look at the uh, forest. You can always cut a branch shorter, but you can't make it longer unless you grow it. So I'm generally pruning to horizontal leaves, getting the plant to spread out rather than going vertical. I want to keep the height you know, down in size. I don't want it getting too tall. It was kind of sad to lose some of the trees in this forest because they all kind of matched in maturity, the look of maturity on the bark and that, but it could have been much worse. I could have lost all the trees 
and that would have been terrible but uh so i'm uh even though i'm disappointed i lost some of the trees i'm also happy that the main trees survived i've come around the back of the planting now and i'm starting to prune back the long branches on these trees again just kind of being conservative with my pruning not taking it back too far until I stand back and have a look at it all. As I'm doing this, I'm kind of keeping the rough profile of the tree in mind, kind of pruning them to a rounded shape. Anything jutting out gets pruned back. Okay, I think that's getting it. Let's go back to the front view. Here's a look at the cutting room floor. I don't have any kind of thick woody cuttings. Here's a look at the forest now. And replacing some of these trees with smaller cuttings may be beneficial in the long run. That I'll have a bigger variety of different tree sizes. Generally, if you grow a forest, you know, from seeds or cuttings, and they're all a similar size, the forest looks, uh, it looks a little strange because all the trees are about the same development. They, uh, they all have about the same trunk thickness, the same... Uh, age to them. So in a forest, it's nice to have really old trees and really young trees, and it gives a good contrast. You can see trees developing and then the mature, the mature version of them. It uh, makes for a more interesting planting. It looks like the sunlight is disappearing today, which is too bad. But So I'm looking at the number one tree or the main tree here, the largest tree, and there's one thing I don't like about it, and that's up top here. I've got kind of a vertical shoot that's getting really tall and vigorous and it's making the whole tree quite high. So I think if I prune that off or back, I think it'll improve the planting. It looks like I have a slanting branch coming off towards the right hand side. So possibly I can reduce it way back to that branch. So here's that apex close up and you can see, you know, all these branches are getting really thick. They're quite coarse growth compared to some of the finer branches down lower on the tree because it's, this branch is gaining all kinds of vigor. So I'm going to need to cut that back. And in here is the one I have on a slant that comes to the right hand side. So I could take that entire top off. And the bonus is I would get a nice woody cutting to plant. I think there's a good opportunity now to take the vigor out of that main apex, shorten the tree, and, you know, improve the tree for the, for the future. I could prune that branch off just kind of short, and it would develop more branches on that crown. But because it's vertical, I don't want to have that section shooting straight up. I want, you know, the branches to spread more horizontally in the apex. So... That's why I'm going to remove it entirely rather than just cut it back shorter and then let new branches grow in. All right, here I go. Big cut coming up. I've got to get in here. So here's where I'm cutting. And I'll just prune it off kind of flush. Here I go. Just like that. Here's a look at my cutting. Nice size cutting to put in the forest. Here's a look at the tree now, and I think that's much better. It, uh, the tree has a more spread out feeling to it. it. Gives me more of an African baobab vibe to it. There is another apex behind that one, right here, that also sticks up quite vertically. So I'm going to see if I can do the same thing with that, prune it back to a, a more spreading branch. Here's a look at that branch now, and there is some outward facing branches coming from behind. So I can prune off that whole top of the branch here, which I'll do. So I'll come in here and here I go. Just like that. Here's a look at that tree now. And I'm going in the right direction. I'm getting the top of the tree pruned down in height, getting my branches more spreading. But right now it looks too horizontal. It looks like a flat top tree. And I want more of a rounded canopy so I've got to reduce some of these other branches over here and maybe some over here to get more of a, a slightly rounded top to it. I think I'm going to have to take, well, 
the top of the tree will grow. It will get more rounded as it grows. Um, because as I've said, you know, the vertical shoots in the middle grow the strongest and then the more horizontal branches are, are a little less vigorous. So if you prune a tree flat at the top, it'll naturally grow into a rounded shape once again. Now, I, I've got a lot of... This tree is kind of overshadowing the tree beside it here, so I'll have to prune that back. I'll continue working away pruning the trees, giving each tree its own space, making sure branches aren't interfering with each other, making sure the branches have nice flow lines to them so they're graceful and they're not all right angle corners and awkward looking. And uh, yeah, trying to keep a rounded top, but fairly flat. And uh, we'll come back and uh, see what it looks like. I've almost got the main tree pruned up to size. I was looking at this tree and thinking, huh, it looks pretty weak. And then I felt the trunk and it's crispy. So that tree is dead also. It's just barely hanging on. So it's fairly firm up to about here. So I can cut this off and try rooting it as a cutting. And same with this branch, but the main trunk has died. That's too bad. That was a nice tree there. I checked all the other trees and they're nice and firm and healthy looking. So that must have been the last one to go. I'll try pruning the healthy branches off as cuttings. So I'll take this one off here. Like that. Looks green and healthy there. And I'll take this one off too. So it gets kind of crispy down here but it's firm up here. So I'll take it off right here, like that. And there's another cutting. And the rest is dead, unfortunately. You can see how it's just hollow inside. I had to take a fair amount of branches off the main tree. They were starting to overlap with the other tree beside it here. And I shortened this tree also. But I've still got a little work to go on these trees. And then you can see this tree is shading out the one behind it here. So this one, you can see it's overlapping the small tree here. So it needs pruning back. What you want to avoid when you're pruning these trees is long straight sections. So you want to prune them back to the first set of leaves, develop another branch off of those and prune those back and eventually get nice interesting movement to the tree branch. What you don't want is big long straight sections on them. It just doesn't look miniature. This tree here is, this branch is really overshadowing the tree here. So I'm going to have to prune this branch back quite a bit. So that gets a lot of this tree more compact, but now this one's still too long overlapping the tree behind it. So it's got kind of a straight curvy section here. And I'm thinking I'm going to take it right off and develop it from this shoot back here. So it comes right off like that. Good cutting. I'm looking at this branch. I don't know if I need this one. That one I was going to develop this part of it. It's a little awkward looking. I'm going to take it right off. Simplifies it up a little bit. And then there's a branch at the back here I don't want either. Take that one right off. Like that. You can start to see a better broom structure in that one now. Once again, I have a big pile of clippings on the floor. So that was the second round of pruning. I'm stepping back now, having a look at the planting. The dead trees over on the left-hand side here, right here, they definitely need to be replaced. I think it needs something there. Uh, I don't mind the big hole in the middle of the planting. It looks quite good having, you know, the left-hand side and the right-hand side kind of separated. It's not so bad. A good density of trees on the right-hand side there. I don't think I'd want to plant any more there. And I don't think I need any trees behind the main tree. That's plenty to look at. You don't need anything behind it to distract your eye. Even the one on the left-hand side over here probably doesn't need to be there. 
And I could prune off that vertical part of it and just keep the, the slanting part of it. I think that would look better. I'll do that. And that'll give me a good cutting also. That looks better. It kind of clears up the space for the main tree a little more so it doesn't look so crowded. All right, I think it's time to pull out the dead trees and plant some cuttings. At the moment, I have five living trees in the planting. So if I plant at least one tree on this side and maybe one towards the back in the middle, that'll bring it up to seven trees total, which is probably a good amount. All right, out come the dead trees. Just kind of pull it out. That soil's really dry. Out comes the second dead tree. So this soil is very dry. I'm going to slowly introduce this planting to water. I, uh, I don't want to shock it, you know. It's been quite dry in the basement and cool, and I just want to slowly wake it up. I'm going to plant the cutting now. I'll rotate the tree around so I can see the front. And this soil is quite dry, so the cutting is also quite dry, so I think it'll be okay to plant it right away. Normally I'd let them dry out for about, you know, three or four days, but I think it'll be fine. So that looks good right, right there. We'll put it in right here. Keep it upright. Here's a look at the cutting now. I will prune off that branch that's growing towards the main tree, that lowest one, eventually. I'll leave it on until hopefully the cutting roots. Now the question is, do I need something back here? I'll remove these dead trees. Like that, and there's one here. We'll have a look at it. Yeah, let me come around. I'll have a look at it from the front and decide if it looks better with a bit of empty space or if it needs a tree or two back here. I'm looking at the planting from the front now and it's looking really good. I think on the right hand side, if I had a tree back here, still with this group, but back at the, towards the back of the pot, I think it, it would lead your eye in a little better and kind of resolve that clump a little of trees, that group of trees, by having something a little smaller there. And I don't know if I need one behind the main tree too. I'll try it. I'll, I'll try a tree each side and see how it looks. I picked out the best of the cuttings. I've got three of them here. So I'll try them in the planting. So I'll spin it around so I'm looking at the front and try some trees. Possibly even one. There, there was another dead one I pulled out here, so I could use one more back here. I'm looking from the front once again. I do like the one over here, the low one. That looks good. The one behind the main tree looks good also. But the only one I don't like is the one I added to the end down here on the right hand side. It just makes that area look too cluttered. So that's got to go. And I'm thinking... I'm going to try this tree, exchange trees here. So this one is also a lot shorter. Okay, so I changed trees there. I got rid of the one on the right-hand side. I think that looks quite nice. I would say, if anything, the one that I just planted could be moved over towards the center a little bit more, just to give it a little more room. Yeah, I think that's looking quite nice. Everything's spaced out nicely. It still has a feeling of openness. It's not too jammed tight like a tropical forest. It looks, still looks quite desert-like or in an arid, arid environment. So I'm happy with that. Um, 
I would like to top dress the uh, surface of the soil with the desert colored sand. That is in the greenhouse. So I'll see if it's in there, if it's frozen or not. And if it's not frozen, I'll bring it in and we can top dress the surface of the planting. I found my pot of sand. It was outside underneath a bonsai bench. This is a mixture of 50% industrial sand and it's a white industrial sand used for sandblasting and 50% playground sand. So that kind of brownish sand. And when you mix it together, it makes a nice desert sand color. I've got the sand sitting on top of the heater. So anything that's frozen should be thawed in no time. While I'm waiting for the sand to thaw out, I'll clean up the landscape, getting all the pine needles out of here. And if I have to do any leveling of the soil surface, I'll do that also. So it's all ready to apply the sand on top as a top layer. Okay, I think the terrain is looking quite good now. I've kind of got, sort of leveled it out so there's not so many slopes on it. So it's more parallel and different steps. It looks like the sand is ready to be applied. It's thawed out. So I'll do that next. I just use a spoon and I put the sand on and just spread it out. When it dries, it'll be a nice desert tan color. If you use just playground sand, it's too dark. And if you use just the white industrial sand, it's too light. So I mix the two half and half and it works out just, just right. And you can get the industrial sand at pretty well any automotive supply place. Just ask them for white sandblasting sand. That's used to strip paint and rust off vehicles and equipment. So you can see I've got the sand on the first layer there and I'll get my misting bottle and I'll just spray it to level it out. All right, here I go with the water. Let me just get a bit more of a jet there. And you can see how the sand flows around and kind of self-levels itself. I think that's pretty good there. I'll continue applying the sand to all the different parts of the terrain. And then we'll come back and have a look at it and see if it looks more desert-like. A lot of people ask me, does this sand settle down and mix in with the bonsai soil? And I find it doesn't. It just keeps its layer on top. It doesn't, you know, go down in the pot and mix with the soil. It just seems to stay separate. I've got the sand applied to the landscape. So now I'll give it a spray just to settle it down. I ran a little short of sand at the back. Uh, there's a big chunk of it still frozen. So when that thaws, I can complete the back there, but I got most of the surface covered. It's funny, just then I was looking at the landscape and it felt like I was really there, that I was in this African landscape. So, and that's what I call being in the bonsai zone. Okay, I think that's pretty good. It's not, you know, you always have to touch it up. I'll see new details and things that I might want to change in the future, but it's looking pretty good. It looks more desert-like, that's for sure. Here's a look at the forest now. So hopefully in the next week or so, it's all going to wake up, get all kinds of new foliage. Hopefully my cuttings will root. If not, I'll just keep trying until I get them a cutting to root in there. So I'll rotate the planting around so you can see it from all angles. There's the front. Coming around to the right view. The back of the planting. Over to the left hand side. And back to the front. So I think this landscape has actually improved today. I brought a lot of the trees that were on the very outside edge of the pot. Everything's more in towards the middle, so it doesn't look quite so crowded in the pot. 
it gives a more of an open landscape feel. It gives me a feeling of that African savanna. And that's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. <laughs>